The Feelworld F5 Pro X is an amazing little monitor for anyone looking to take the next step in their videographer or content creation journey. If you're shopping for a monitor for your camera setup, allow me to show you why I believe this one is the right one for you. I'm Larry G and on this channel, I help people create better content. This video was not sponsored. I bought this monitor with my own money. Let's start with the specs. This IPS touchscreen monitor comes in at 5.5 inches and boasts 1600 nits of brightness. The aspect ratio is 16 by nine and the screen resolution is 1920 by 1080. The monitor itself can handle 4K and it comes in at 245 grams. It features HDMI in and out, five volt USB-C input, 8.4 volt DC output, and a headphone jack. One of the major selling points that isn't as common with other monitors in this price range is the option for an NPF style output on the back of the monitor. This is extremely helpful if you're gonna be using something like a wireless transmitter or a small light that uses NPF style power. On the top of the monitor, you'll find three function buttons that can be customized, a button to turn on or off the touchscreen functionality, a menu button, an up and down button, and also the exit or power button. There are four mounting options on this monitor. All of them are quarter 20 inch screw threads. There's one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the side, and one on the back. This monitor can be powered via NPF style batteries, DC, or even USB-C. There are two options when purchasing this monitor. You can get one that is the base that does not come with the battery or the case, or you can purchase the one that comes with the battery in the case. The price difference is about $10 at this point. I purchased the one that comes with the battery in the case because $10 is $10. So let's go over what comes in the box. Inside the box, you'll find the monitor, NPF battery, mine came with the 970, which is a little heavy, mounting bracket, hood, HDMI cable, USB-A to USB-C adapter, and a USB-A to USB-C cable. And it comes in this nice little carrying case. This budget monitor is loaded with features like waveforms, vectors, histograms, focus assist, false color, ratio markers, safe frames, scan modes, image flip, and so much more. A few key factors that really influenced this purchase for me were focus assist, ratio markers, zebras, the ability to add custom LUTs, and the screen brightness. So who exactly is this monitor for? At the time of filming this video, this monitor package comes in at around $170. Someone who's used to something like the Atomos Ninja series, this monitor will probably be a little underwhelming. I would say that this monitor is for someone who's looking to get their first or second monitor, someone who's looking to upgrade from something that's a little less bright or a little more basic. Like I mentioned, this monitor is jam-packed full of features that are sure to help you take your filming from just looking at the back of a camera screen or using your iPhone even to something a little more professional, something a little larger and something that has the tools and features that can actually help you achieve your filming outcomes. So I've done my due diligence and now I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions that people have about this monitor. Is it bright enough to use on a sunny day? Recently, I took this monitor with me on a trip to Texas where I was filming several interviews in the middle of the day in 95 degree heat. And this monitor was super bright. I had it turned all the way up to 1600 nits full brightness. And I, along with three other people who were helping monitor my shot, could definitely see everything we needed to see without having to squint, without having to get super close, and even without needing to use the sun hood. How is the focus assist? One of the main reasons that I recommend people use a monitor when filming, especially in a little more professional setup, is so that you can actually tell what's in focus. One of the secrets when filming more professional style videos, especially talking head, is to turn off the autofocus and use manual focus. And focus peaking in the monitor really helps establish that. It's set up very similar to the way you would set it up in your camera and using this allows there to be an outline, your color choice, 
around what exactly is in focus so that when you're looking at the monitor, you can make sure that your shots are in focus. How about connecting this to the camera? When you purchase this package, it does come with an HDMI cable. However, it comes with the HDMI to HDMI micro cable. I use Sony cameras, so this isn't a problem for me as most of them have that jack on the camera. I would just say make sure that you're checking what your camera actually needs in order to output HDMI signal. You may need to purchase a separate cable if your camera does not include the HDMI micro port. What about fan noise? Well, this monitor is fairly small and so I don't believe that there's a fan inside. Like I said, I took this on a trip with me down to Texas and I filmed a lot of interviews during the day and I could not hear a fan at all. What about overheating? Now, like I've been saying, I use this monitor in Texas in 95 degree heat, that's not counting the humidity, in the middle of the day. We were filming inside of an unfinished house and outside in direct sun. And I was having the camera rolling and the monitor on for at least 20 to 30 minute segments at a time. I really wasn't turning the monitor off in between the people who were switching but this monitor did not overheat. I never received an overheating warning. I never received anything that said that the monitor was getting too hot. And I was using MPF style batteries. I was not using the 970, I was using the 550s, but I did not receive any overheating warning at all. What about the ratio markers? There are two sets of ratio markers that people may be referring to. One is the safe zone, so you do have the option to turn safe zones on and off. And the other is an actual marker on the screen that will show you what different aspect ratios look like. Now this monitor does come with several of them and on the screen right now you should be able to see me cycling through the different ones. Two of the ones that people really care about are four by three and 16 by nine. So you can turn those on and off. And then you also have the ability to have the outside of that marker be bright or darker, just so you can tell what's exactly in frame if you're gonna be cropping or trimming some of this footage. What about LUTs? So this monitor does have a few LUTs built in it also comes with a Rec. 709 preview, but the main thing to know about LUTs in this camera is that these are for preview purposes only. Like I mentioned, this monitor does not allow you to record anything to it, so it's not like the look is gonna be baked into your footage. This is only for a reference if you are filming on set or you're filming with other people and you want them to be able to see what the footage will look like at the end of production. If you are interested in picking one of these up for yourself, I would greatly appreciate you using one of the affiliate links down below. It greatly helps out the channel and helps me make more videos just like this. If you found this helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up or hitting the subscribe button. If you have any questions that I did not answer, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Remember to do the work, believe in yourself, and most importantly, keep creating. Peace.